Well, hey again, welcome back to day number three. So if this is your first time here, I'm doing a Instagram live every single day this week at this time, 3 p.m., talking all things Thanksgiving. And if you were here yesterday and the day before, um, thank you, thanks for coming back again. To do a little recap while I'm waiting for more people to arrive, Monday we talked all about what you guys could be making this week. This is a really, really good week with three weeks to go. Hard to believe that Thanksgiving is three weeks from tomorrow. This is a great week to make all your pie crusts, stick them in your freezer. It's also a great week to make cranberry sauce, which freezes really well, make rolls, they also freeze really well. Uh, if your grocery store or your local farmer's market has turkey, grab some turkey, make fresh homemade turkey stock, because you can stick that in the freezer. So we talked about that on Monday. Yesterday was all about turkey. If you guys tuned in, you saw that my local grocery store did not have turkey yet. So I made a chicken yesterday, which turned out really delicious because turkey is basically just like a big chicken, if you think about it. So that's what we did yesterday and the day before. And today I am making my absolute favorite, bar none, hands down, most amazing, dreamy, insanely good mashed potatoes. So we're moving into side dishes because Thanksgiving, lots of side dishes. So in side dishes, make the meal and I don't really think that you can have Thanksgiving without mashed potatoes. So I wanted to show you guys that I cubed some potatoes up and I stuck them in a big bowl with cold water. These I did this morning. This is my secret trick for making potatoes or prepping them beforehand. You can actually do this the night before and your potatoes won't brown. So whichever potatoes you use, these are Yukon Gold, but I've also used Russet, I've used Red Potatoes. I tend to like Yukon Gold a little bit better for mashed potatoes because they tend to have a butterier consistency, but use whatever potatoes that you like because this method for prepping them beforehand and not having them brown works for any potato. I don't know about sweet potatoes, but it works for russets, red, Yukon Gold. So these I, get, I did um, this morning and then I just, again, stuck them in a bowl of cold water and I'm gonna get ready to cook them. So the first thing you wanna do when you take them out of the fridge is you just wanna give them a quick rinse because you don't want um, this water they've been sitting in to cook it, cook with them. So I'm just gonna do a quick little rinse, drain them. Water. That's for later. And the great thing is they're going in your pot so you actually don't need to dry them off. So then just stick them in the pot. You're gonna cook them in. This. Dina is watching. Well, hello, Dina. Welcome to my Instagram Live. So glad you could join. I have my wonderful videographer, my daughter. Okay, so now they're in the pot. Here's the trick. Normally, you would cover them with water, right? It's kind of the normal standard way of cooking mashed potatoes. You barely cover them with water. Uh, a lot of times you add a bay leaf or you flavor it with a little bit of salt, maybe even a little bit of pepper, and then you simmer until they're nice and fork tender. I have something better. Instead of cooking your potatoes in water, you can cook them in cream. The reason why is because potatoes have a really lovely flavor. And when you cook them in water, all that flavor of the potato is gonna get drained away because you're gonna drain the potatoes, add them back to your pot, and then add your cream, your half and half, your butter, um, whatever other flavorings. I know sometimes people add cheese. My mom loves to add Romano cheese. But then all that wonderful flavor in the water is down the drain. So instead, I like to cook them in cream because now you're gonna flavor the cream with not only the potato flavor, but I'm gonna add garlic and fresh herbs. I'm gonna add rosemary today. And then you simmer the potatoes away in the cream and you get this wonderful flavored cream that then you are going to, when you drain the potatoes, you're gonna make sure you put a bowl under your colander to catch all that gorgeous cream that you're gonna then incorporate that flavored cream back into your potatoes. So amazing. This is mind blowing. So you wanna add just enough cream similar to similar to water. So you wanna add just, it kind of barely covers. You might see a little bit of the potato. Just kind of barely cover the potatoes. And then to this, we're gonna add, I'm gonna get some fresh rosemary. Go, get some fresh, oopsie. Go, fresh rosemary is right here. This is seriously the best. So I found this recipe because I 
love watching Food Network. And Tyler Florence, who's one of my favorite chefs, demoed this. I forget what, I might have been a cooking competition where he talked about it and I thought it was genius. So I tried this, I think it's been like three or four Thanksgivings ago. I will never ever go back, regardless of when I make mashed potatoes, I will never cook them in water again. So anytime I make mashed potatoes, this is the method I use. And yeah, you know, I know it's probably not the healthiest, but it's also Thanksgiving. And you're not gonna add all of this cream back in because there's a lot more cream right now than potato in here. So I'll show you how that's done when it's finished cooking. So I'm gonna th throw a few sprigs of rosemary. And the rosemary is really nice because you've got rosemary flavor in the herbs that you're cooking with your turkey. And you've also got rosemary in the stuffing. So rosemary is a really common flavor for the holidays and it kind of carries that theme out. So to that, I'm going to just do a kind of a rough, I'm not even chopping the garlic, but do one clove of garlic. I think two might be too much. So I'm gonna do one clove of garlic and then we're going to bring it to a simmer. And when you are working with cream or with milk, it's very easy for it to boil over. So what I like to do is I'll put it up on high heat, but I will not cover it. And I'll just kind of stand by and watch it. And then as soon as it starts boiling, I'll turn the heat down and I'll just partially cover it. Because the worst thing is if, is if the milk or the cream goes all over your stove. So it's on pretty high heat right now. So we're gonna kind of let that come to you as simmer. I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna watch it because you do have to watch this carefully. And it takes probably about, about 15 minutes because you want the potatoes to get nice and fork tender. And I'll show you how you prep them afterwards. So while this is going on, do you guys have any questions? Any questions out there about Thanksgiving, about side dishes? I can rehash. I'm not sure, I think Dina, you were around yesterday. But if ever, anyone's watching that wasn't here yesterday, I'm happy to recap. Oops, now I've lost my cap. I'll find it later. I can recap what we talked about yesterday while these, this is cooking. So feel free to answer or to ask away because this is, this is your time too. I'm here to help you out when it comes to Thanksgiving because like I said, Thanksgiving is three weeks away, which I know is kind of hard to believe, but we're all gonna survive, we're all gonna get there. It's amazing what happens when you actually have a plan. And so like I talked about on Monday, it's super important to have your meal all planned out. So this is a really good week to sit down, write out what you want to serve, what you want to cook. If you have a big group coming, de delegate. Delegating is, a really great way to take a little bit off of your plate, literally and figuratively, for what you're gonna cook. So if you have a plan going into Thanksgiving and know what you're gonna cook, it just makes it much easier because you know how to prepare for it. So speaking of preparing, I know I got some questions about when to shop for things. So I like to shop for all of the heartier vegetables like the onions, the potatoes, the garlic. I'll usually do the Thursday or Friday before Thanksgiving because they last. They're hearty, they're gonna last at least a week. And you're also gonna not wait a week to cook them. So potatoes, onions, garlic, hearty things like that. Leeks, I also would buy about the week before, like Thursday or Friday before. And then like I talked about yesterday, you want to or make sure you order your turkey this week. And depending on when you pick up your turkey, you might have to stick it back in the freezer. So depending also on how big your turkey is, determines when you need to take it out of the freezer and start to frost it in your refrigerator. Usually the guideline is probably about four or five days to make sure that you take it out of the freezer and put it into the refrigerator to start to frosting it. And then as far as the perishable, you know, if you're making mushrooms or green beans, all the veggies, I usually like to go to the grocery store and do my big, huge shopping for everything on Monday. So I've already got the turkey by Monday, the Monday before Thanksgiving, I've already picked up my turkey. It's already in my fridge, my fridge, my refrigerator defrosting. And I've already gone and bought the hardier things. But Monday is when I buy flowers. It's when I buy everything else on my list because I don't like to continue to run back and forth to the store. So that's how, when you know what you want to cook and you know what you're going to cook, you can also figure out when you're going to shop for things. So Monday is when I do all of my shopping, which, is really nice because most of the crowds go, I think Tuesday and Wednesday, so Monday it's all done. And then another tip I like to, um, I'll share also, is when you come home on Monday, when you get all your, your vegetables, when I come home on Monday, 
as I'm putting things away, I wash, I chop, I prep. So I know that I'm making stuffing, let's just say. I'm making stuffing, I know that I need an onion, I know that I need carrots and celery, whatever ingredients go into my stuffing that are the vegetable components. When I come home on Monday, I wash them, I, whether they need to be diced or chopped or minced, and I put them in a gigantic big gallon size bag and I market stuffing and I go kind of down the list. And I'll do that for whatever other side dishes. I have a corn side dish I make, so I'll do, the corn side dish I think is usually onions and garlic and celery. So I'll also do the onions and garlic and celery, stick it in a big Ziploc bag, mark down corn dish. So that's also a way that you can do a lot of prep on Monday when it comes to your veggies. So I should, I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. So you can see it's kind of, it's just starting. See, you've got the little bit of the ripples starting. Just a little bit of the ripples. See, it's just starting, starting with the little bubbles. It's almost, it's getting there. So milk usually takes a little bit longer to bring to a simmer. But like I said, you wanna make sure, this is a dish that you kind of do need to babysit a little bit. But again, you're making this the day before. Mashed potatoes I always make on Wednesday. So Tuesday, I dice, I peel, I dice, kind of store in a big bowl covered with cold water, store it in your refrigerator, or you can do it in a, in a Pyrex dish, whatever, whatever makes sense for however many potatoes you're making. I usually plan on two potatoes per person when it comes to the Yukon Gold. I'll do one potato a person for russets because they're a lot bigger, and probably about two potatoes a person for red potatoes. It also depends on how many side dishes you're making. So I know some people have a ton of side dishes. If you have a ton of side dishes, I probably would air more one potato a person because it does make a lot of mashed potatoes. So you might want to do one. I think we're starting. How long do you cook the potatoes in the cream? This usually takes about 15 minutes because you want them to be nice and fork tender. So about 15 minutes usually from start to finish because I also, I don't know if you can see, I'll show you. The trick too is to cook them a little bit faster is I dice them up fairly small. Actually, these are even bigger than I normally do. Normally, I cut them up even smaller because the smaller the potato, the faster it will cook. So usually about 15 minutes. Usually about 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna also show you a tool. I'm not a huge lover of a ton of kitchen gadgets, but one thing that I definitely use, especially during the holidays, it's worth the extra step, is a ricer. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here's... And you can just pick it up on you know, Amazon, Williams Sonoma, Sir the Top, they all have them. And what you do is when you drain your potatoes, before you put them back in this pot, you basically put the ricer over the pot and you add potatoes and then it kind of presses down and the potato goes through these little teeny tiny holes and it makes for a really fluffy potato. Because normally, normally I'll just make potatoes. Oh, okay, that was put back dirty. Well, that was a good thing. Um, normally I put, this is gonna get washed, but anyway, normally I do potatoes, mashed potatoes with a natural like this, but honestly for the holidays, it's so worth it to do that extra step. Oh, we have foliage. See, so now as long as you stay here and kind of watch, it's not gonna boil over. And usually I will take a lid, I can find my lid. Usually I'll take a lid and I'll kind of put the lid halfway over. Because if you put the lid fully over, you're more likely to have that cream boil over. So I usually put it about like this. And then my favorite kitchen gadget of all time, Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. Ten minutes so we're going to check it in about 10 minutes, which means I have 10 more minutes to answer any questions you guys might have. Um, and I've got a fork right next to it. So you know it's done when you want the fork to really, really, really easily pierce the potato. Do so you guys want to talk, me to talk about what I covered yesterday and Monday a little bit more? Or anything else you have questions about? Or side, what side dishes? Tell me what side dishes you guys are cooking for Thanksgiving. Anyone out there do their potatoes a different way? I know that my mom loves to do, um, whoops, see? I keep an eye on it and we're gonna turn it down. And if it, it gets a little bit too much, you just lift it up. That actually happened in a perfect time. I'm gonna show you guys. See, and then it goes back down again. I'm just gonna leave, leave the lid off. 
But if that happens, that's all you have to do is just take the lid off, lift your pot off the heat, and most ovens, or most stoves, most stoves, have different size burners. So I put it on kind of the mid-size burner, not the smallest. My burners tend to run really, really hot. So you definitely wouldn't want to put this on your largest burner. I put it on like a smaller or medium burner, depending on how hot um, your stove is. Because yeah, my burners, my burners run really hot. So, and you can also put other herbs in this too. You, if you like it super garlicky, you can add an extra clove of garlic. You can put in fresh thyme would be really lovely. If you wanted thyme, if you wanted a little bit more, maybe a delicate flavor, you could do thyme. I would not do sage. I don't particularly like sage with my potatoes, but if you love sage, put some sage in. You could do a combination, rosemary and thyme. And also two potatoes take a lot of salt normally. But I tend to back off the salt a bit when it comes to Thanksgiving mashed potatoes because there's so much salt in everything else. The turkey has a ton of salt, the gravy has salt. So I tend to back off the salt a little bit because it can almost feel like you're eating a salt bomb if you're eating turkey that's a little salty and you've got the mashed potatoes that are salty and you've got the gravy that's salty. So normally I tend to add quite a generous amount of salt to my potatoes, but not during Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, not so much. Do a little test. Yeah, now they're still pretty, so they're not going through. You want the fork to really, really nicely gently pierce, but no, it's still, there's still give. Dina's asking if you have a food dish that will travel up to her sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know what, anything that you can bake in a casserole dish. So tomorrow, I'm actually baking one of my favorite sides. It's a cranberry apple crisp that doubles as a really good substitute for cranberry sauce or dessert, and it's super easy to transport. Stuffing's actually easy to transport. You normally don't want to transport anything that's really saucy or juicy. So I would say uh, don't offer to bring the gravy. Mashed potatoes, you can absolutely bring mashed potatoes because you can make your mashed potatoes on Wednesday and then just stick them in um, a large container, a large travel container, Tupperware, and then it will travel to your sister super easily. And then just stick them in a pot over low heat and then stir them to reheat them and they reheat beautifully. You might need to add a little extra butter, which you know, there's no problem with that, right? Adding a little extra butter. So I would definitely suggest that. And also desserts too. Offer to bring the pies, apple pie, pecan pie, pumpkin pie would be really good. Um, turkey might be a little bit to fit in your car, so maybe let your sister make the turkey. Does that help? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good question though. It's a lot of traveling. I would say stick, stay away from saucy dishes. Anything that's too saucy or cheesy, anything that might shift in your car um, or that really needs to be like super, super piping hot. So like yesterday we talked about the chicken. Oh, why did I show you the chicken? Because I didn't cook it yesterday. I prepped it and then we were kind of done answering questions. So let me show you how the chicken turned out. But if you weren't tuning in yesterday, I didn't... I wasn't able to get a turkey from my grocery store because they don't have them yet. So I subbed a, a chicken just to show the kind of marinade I use and show how to stuff the, the turkey. So I want to show you what it looks like though because it turned out so gorgeous. So here, so just pretend that this is a turkey. And like I talked about yesterday, I know some people can get really overwhelmed thinking about cooking it whole, gigantic, big turkey. But if you just think of it as a large chicken, see? And that is, so I'm gonna reheat this for dinner tonight, but look at how it was gorgeous and brown yesterday. I'm gonna reheat it a little bit tonight, but that's what it looked like. So if you wanna stay tuned, I'll post a picture on my stories later tonight when it's all nice and warmed up. But that's it, that's what, we, that's what the turkey, the turkey chicken looks like. I'm gonna stick it back in the fridge. And I will, I'll post a picture of my stories later tonight because this is what we're having for dinner. Any other questions? Okay, let's check the, we'll check the potatoes. But see, as long as you leave the lid off, it doesn't, oh, they're almost there, they're almost, we're getting there. Not quite. I might undercook these just a smidge only because I really want to show you guys I really want to show you how you put them together. Oh, this is so... Oh, oh, they're getting there. Not quite. Not quite. And, oh, another thing we talked about yesterday in terms of the turkey, I forgot to mention how long to cook it for. So, usually, 
there's different methods for cooking turkey. So I usually do 350, but you can also start off, and I've done this as well before, you can either start off and crank your heat up to about 425 and cook the turkey for about 30 to 45 minutes to get the skin, start getting the skin nice and crispy and brown, and then turn the heat down to 350 and then cook it at 350 until it's completely cooked through. Or you can cook it at 350 and then the last like 30, 45 minutes, crank the heat up to like 425 and then get the skin nice and brown. So there's lots of different methods to cook it. It's usually about 15 minutes a pound. You want to cook it until the internal temperature when you insert the thermometer into the thigh is 160, 165, because you're also gonna rest it. So turkey usually rests about 15, 20 minutes, which is great because while the turkey's resting, that's when you stick everything else in the oven to warm up, which is another reason to plan because you should see how many dishes fit in your oven because that way you'll know how many dishes you how many dishes you're making that are gonna go in the oven to warm up and you're not gonna have extra dishes that you're gonna say, oh my gosh, I have no room for these. The microwave also though is a really good heats up really well as well, which is really good. And then tomorrow I may be talking more about side dishes tomorrow. And like I said, I'd be making this cranberry apple crisp that my friend Caroline would always make. I'm not a huge cranberry fan. I kind of like it. And my mom, when I was growing up, she would always make like three or four different kinds of cranberry sauce. She'd have cranberry chutney, different cranberry sauces. And my dad, my brother and I would always go to the canned cranberry sauce that we always insisted was on the table with the little ridges, the wiggle, it's like the best. So that's still the cranberry sauce I use. I have to have it with my turkey every single Thanksgiving. But my friend Caroline, she makes this amazing cranberry apple crisp that is on the savorier side. So it makes a really good kind of stand-in for cranberry sauce. So good. But I was also thinking the other day, it would make a really good dessert, especially if you have anyone coming that is not a huge sweet person because it's definitely more on the tart side. You could sweeten it up by serving it with some whipped cream or some ice cream, but I think, I'm actually try that this Thanksgiving. I think it actually might be really good that way too. Because not everyone loves the sweets, and sometimes the sweets can just be so overwhelming at Thanksgiving. So, I would, I'm gonna try that out actually. So I'm gonna make that tomorrow, and talk more about side dishes tomorrow. What else do you guys want me to cover tomorrow? Are there any other topics? I've got more questions that I'll be answering tomorrow, so keep the questions coming for everyone that's DM'd and PM'd and IM'd and texted and called and left me messages about questions. Thank you for that. So I will be answering more questions tomorrow. There are definitely a lot of very common questions. Timing being the big one. So timing has everything to do with how you plan your meal too. So if you know what you're cooking and you know how long everything needs to cook, what needs to go in when, it also helps with the time in the actual day and you know what you can prep ahead of time. Because honestly, the only thing that you absolutely have to make the day of Thanksgiving is the turkey. I mean, technically you can make it the day before and reheat it, but I really think the turkey needs to be hot out of the oven, resting and served like that versus reheating it from the day before. So it's really the only thing you truly need to make the day of. Dina says that they make a cranberry salsa. <gasps> She says it sounds weird, but it's actually really good. Oh, that's, I bet that's delicious. Okay, I love the recipe for that. That sounds amazing. Cranberry salsa. Okay, that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love that. Okay, these are so close. Just a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes, guys. And Frederick said that that also sounds great. Doesn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Cranberry salsa. Okay, I'm all for that. Okay, Dina, send me the recipe. And I promise I will credit you. <laughs> Alexa, off. Alexa, set timer for three minutes. We're so close, guys. We're so, so close. Okay, does anyone else out there have Alexa? Because I swear, oh, she's now turned on. I don't know what I would have done without her. See, now it's, it's bubbling away. You want to just keep it kind of not overflowing. I would say that this is a steady boil versus a hard boil. Like a hard boil, you'd have the big bubbles kind of coming up, which would mean that you'd have cream all over your stove. And if you do have an explosion with the cream going over your stove, I find that it's not that hard to clean up. Make sure, try and get to it when it's not hot, but warm. 
Oh, oh boy. We are so close. We are so, so close. Okay, so what other side dishes do you guys make for Thanksgiving? Does anyone out there do green bean casserole? Then that, that's a really popular one. I made a green bean casserole for my daughter's friends, had a Friendsgiving, and I made a green bean casserole with bechamel sauce and Gruyere cheese. What is it about cream and cheese and veggies? When my kids were little and I would try and get them to eat veggies, that's all I had to do. I would have to mix it with cream and cheese and they would eat it. That was like the magic combination. And it's so good. It's so good. And I don't really even like green beans. I guess I'm telling you guys all the things I don't like. I do love a lot of food. <laughs> Cranberries and green beans are not my favorites, but that green bean casserole, of course I had to taste it before I sent my daughter off to her party with it was so good and I was actually kind of sad that she came back with a completely empty dish. I was hoping she'd come back with just a little bit. Okay, we are minutes away. Seriously, minutes away. Frederick said a funny comment that his Alexa went off when you said Alexa. <laughs> Sorry about that. But isn't it the greatest tool though? I love it. I use it for timing all the time. I use it for listening to music all the time. Those are probably like the two biggest things. And I love how it can set multiple timers because my oven actually doesn't have a timer, it's an old oven. And so it's so nice that I can set multiple timers for it. I seriously, my husband bought it before it was like, um, not demoing, but it was like in the beta phase or whatever, because ours is like an original one. And I thought, what do we need with another piece of tech? Like we have our phones, we have our computers. This is ridiculous. If I want to listen to music, I'll listen to it on my phone. Okay, yeah, I ate my words because it's amazing. And then my parents have one. Okay, I think we're ready. Okay, guys, see? So now it's going in the fork. You can Here, I'm gonna take a little plate out to show you exactly how the potatoes are gonna look. I think that was about 15 minutes. So you wanna take the potato and you just see? It goes in, it doesn't fall apart though, but that's okay, you just want it to go slides in really easily. Okay, so now the most important thing, we're turning the oven off, or the stove off, the most important thing is before you drain it, you must make sure, oh, Alexa, off. Oops, sorry, yours went off again. So I've got my colander, but I've got it in my bowl because you do not want to lose that gorgeous cream. And then we're just gonna drain it. Frederick just mentioned a sauerkraut, caraway, mushroom, and sour cream casserole. <gasps> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. Okay, I want that recipe too. <laughs> that sounds amazing. He says it's really easy to make as well. Oh, I love it. Well, that's the great thing about dishes that are so easy. Okay, so see, it drained in here. And now you kind of have to go fishing out a little bit. Be careful because this is going to be hot. So I'll fish out because you don't want the big rosemary stalks. So you have to kind of go fishing out and fish out the garlic. Um, full disclosure, I have forgotten the garlic on a couple of occasions, and it's not the biggest of deal, because people know right away. <laughs> They've got a big garlic clove. So we gotta do this, fish out these, because the rosemary tends to fall apart. You might, um, if you use thyme, I really wouldn't worry about doing, fishing out the thyme leaves. If you're just using thyme and only thyme, the leaves are so delicate and fine that you can mash them right and incorporate them right into the potato, and it will be delicious. I'm not doing this with the rosemary because as you can see, whoop, hot. the rosemary does not break down. So there's still, you don't, want a, you don't want a mouthful of that, trust me. But thyme, thyme would be great. You, you can absolutely incorporate the thyme. So we're just gonna do this. Okay, your side dishes sound really good. Now I'm getting hungry for Thanksgiving. And now do you guys do potluck or do you make it all your own? Because I know that some people do a lot of potluck depending on how many people they have over. And some do it all on their own. I tend to do it most on my own, although I go to my brother's. Sometimes my sister-in-law has a huge family. So whenever we go to my brother and sister-in-law's for Thanksgiving, it's definitely a potluck because I think there's like, oh gosh, 30 people that come, including kids. So it would be, it would be a, big, a big job for whoever was hosting to cook for that many people. Not, not, not doable, but they always do a potluck. Okay, almost done here. And then let's see, oops, we got another. Dina says she also does a potluck. Potluck just makes it easy. You know, I feel like for Thanksgiving, you gotta do what works. I, there's so much pressure we put on ourselves. I feel like to make 
some fabulous, outrageously creative master chef dinner when all that matters is there'll be good food and friends and family to share with and you can do what works for you. Do potluck if that works for you, cook it all if that works for you because at the end of the day, you don't want to be stressed. That also leads to stress too if you put too much on your plate. Okay, oops, we got one more little, come on out. Got one more little, and my hands are washed, just in case you guys were wondering. Alrighty, we're almost there. Okay, oops, a couple more. And if you don't get them all, you can also bring, get them out when um, you mash it. Okay, so and then, okay. Let's see, where did my garlic, oh, there's your garlic there. That's why I like, like to leave the garlic big, so it's easier to pick out. And there's, there's another bit of garlic there, whoops, there. Okay, so now we've got that all, and I kind of used the cooking to serve in it. Scoop that all out there. I'll clean that up later. Take a little paper towel, actually to make this a little easier. I'm gonna wipe the pot out, and then add the potatoes back to the pot. And then I'm gonna add in very small increments. You don't wanna to add too much of the cream all at once because you don't want soupy mashed potatoes. You want creamy, gorgeous, lovely mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna add the potatoes back here. I'm gonna put them back on the stove. Gorgeous. Oh, I was gonna show you how the ricer works too. Oopsie, I almost forgot the ricer. So while they're in here, because I'm gonna do it as I would do for Thanksgiving. You wanna grab your ricer and put the ricer right over the pot and then do it in little increments. Yes, it's a little time consuming, but I promise you, it makes such a difference. So see, and then you squeeze it out. See, look how gorgeous. Now in the interest of time, I'm actually not gonna do this all because we've kind of waited a little bit a little bit of time for the potatoes to cook. So I'm actually gonna just do them with the regular masher, but you get the idea. I love the ricer. The ricer makes them so gorgeous and fluffy. Okay, so we're gonna bring the cream over. Bring the masher over. And you wanna kinda of mash them first before you add stuff to let the steam out a little bit. So mash them up a little bit here. And I'm also gonna, be, gonna go get what makes these also amazing is butter. And I think it was Thomas Keller, I think, might have been the chef that said it's basically a pound of butter for every pound of potatoes or something like insane like that. But potatoes definitely take a lot of butter because you want that nice creamy gorgeousness. Now you can also put the butter in with the cream, which I've done too, or you can add the butter in like this as you're mashing. It just kind of depends. Or just kind of add the butter as you go. So you're gonna kind of keep mashing to get these all nice and mashed. I like to get them well started and well mashed before I add the cream, because then you're just gonna stir the cream in. So we'll just consider this good. So we're gonna keep going until we're nice and mashed. And then, a little bit by little bit, that's why I like to put it in a bowl that has a spout, so it's easier to pour in. So just a little bit at a time. And then you're gonna stir. Oh, got your ring. It helps to turn the stove back on. I'm serious about getting those recipes too that you guys can for your side dishes. Those sound really good. Okay, so you can add a little bit. Oops, and here's another. As you mix, you might find another rosemary leaf. You can just take it out. Or you might discover a garlic clove. You can just take it out. So see how they're kind of stiff right now? So you want to add the cream color nice and whoopsie clean. So, a little bit more. I've never used the whole amount of cream that I put the potatoes in. So you don't want to ever just dump this whole container into the potatoes because I do think that that would be too much cream. I think that you wind up with soupy potatoes. See, they're starting to get creamier, see? Oh, and they smell so good herby. And you can also, at this point, if you want to add cheese, you could add cheese. Like I said earlier, my mom loves to add Romano. You could add Parmesan. Uh, you could even add a little Gruyere cheese or Comte cheese. Okay. And then you also want to 
add in some salt. And like I also talked about earlier, I'm not gonna add too much. Normally I add a ton of salt to my potatoes because potatoes, because of the starch, they can take and handle a lot of salt and they need it for their flavor. But because of the cream and the rosemary and the garlic and all the other salt that's gonna be on the Thanksgiving table, these don't, I'm not gonna put that much salt in these. Okay, see how creamy they are now? Creamy and dreamy potatoes. Now they would look a little creamer, honestly, if I'd used the ricer, but again, I'm in the interest of time. I know we're getting a little on the late side. There we go, just add a little bit more. I think we're basically done. And then the best part is once you do this, you taste. So, taste this and see. Oh my God, so good. Mm. And I actually kind of like the little bits of soft potato in it, so it just makes it a little bit more of a texture, but the flavor is so good. I'm going to add a little bit more butter. Um, I'm going to finish these off, and if you guys have any more questions, feel free, or I'll just say bye for now, and um, see you tomorrow. Any more questions, guys? Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to be talking all about that cranberry apple crisp. I'll be making that. Talking more about side dishes, talking more about timing, all sorts of other tips I've got for Thanksgiving. Keep the questions coming. Recipes are on the website, a menu for you under Thanksgiving feast. Again, if you're not a member, I've unlocked the site this whole week, so you have access to all the recipes, all the menus, all week long. If you're not a member, just as my little Thanksgiving, pre-Thanksgiving gift to you guys. So check out the menu, um, Thanksgiving feast. It's up right now. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. See, look how gorgeous they look. Gorgeous, creamy, and delicious. And I promise, when you cook your potatoes this way, you seriously, you won't cook them the other way. And again, like I said too, uh, you can make these the day before. So peel, dice the potatoes on Tuesday, store them in your fridge in a bowl of cold water, drain, cook them on Wednesday, and reheat them gently. On Thursday, you might have to add a little extra butter to them, but again, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? So, alrighty. Have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you guys same time, three o'clock tomorrow. Bye for now. So cute. Yeah, in now.